Hi everyone, this is Dr. Wes Fryer. Today is actually April the 14th, 2021, and this is a shortened version of a presentation and little workshop I shared with our elementary staff, our lower division uh, teachers in grades uh, one through four yesterday about Apple Classroom 101. This is a session for anyone whose students are using iPads and you would like to have some better classroom management uh, tools with them. So uh, I told a story um, to start off the meeting that was really a great one about you know one of my students who actually uh, helped his younger sister to not share her address and her phone number on a website that was going to give her a free iPad supposedly uh, and it was just a reminder of how important conversations with our students are um, about their choices and about digital citizenship, privacy and all kinds of things um, the segue or the connection to Apple Classroom is that it really can help us have different conversations with students about their choices and their behavior. Um, we had done a lesson in the last few weeks in my fifth and six, well fifth grade media literacy class called "Don't Get Tricked." Anyway, it was it was a reminder of that. That's just what we had started with yesterday. Um, why use Apple Classroom? Well. There are many reasons, but the biggest two reasons for me is that number one, it helps me quickly share student iPad screens on a classroom TV or projector uh, because I really like students to be able to share what they're creating and doing, um, ask questions, be able to you know show me what they're working on and show their classmates. And an Apple Classroom is absolutely the fast, fastest way I have found you know, if kids are individually trying to airplay and put in a room code, it's just cumbersome. And Apple Classroom can be really fast. The second thing is just being able to have a little bit more monitoring capability for student iPad screens. None of us have, as teachers, you know, have time to sit there and just monitor the kids. But having a tool like this that can show their screens, that can let you observe their screen, and you can use it every once in a while to pop in and just, you know, see their screen and uh, create this awareness of accountability. And also how we as a school reserve the right for our teachers and our staff, the adults, you know, to be able to observe screens and check out what students are doing and they're responsible for what they're doing. So uh, online on, a, on an iPad or a device just like they, were, they are in person. So those are a few reasons. Um, Apple Classroom is, I view it as classroom management software. You know, it has the word classroom in it, but don't be confused. This isn't another Google Classroom and it doesn't take the place of Seesaw. You know, Google Classroom we use as uh, an LMS or a learning management system. There's a whole lot of other choices for LMS, but that's what we use for middle and high school primarily, I think in fourth grade. But then Seesaw is a, is a learning journal and that is different. Apple Classroom is gonna let you manage the Apple devices, and if you have laptops, you can use it with those as well, um, but it is, it is really powerful, but it's management software. It's not giving students assignments and you know getting work back from them or having them post to a portfolio. Um, the Apple Classroom app only is required for teachers, and, it, and very importantly, and I'm going to do a demo of this in the video, you can, you can actually use a Mac or an Apple laptop or you can use an iPad in order to, you know, perform these functions, share student screens, observe their screens, be able to have reports on wh what students did and where they went, uh, what screen they're on, all those things. You just need the Apple Classroom app. The Apple devices are built in with this feature to be able to participate in, in quote unquote, an Apple Classroom. Uh, there's fancier ways to set this up. Some schools will set up classes automatically for teachers. We're not at that point, so this is really just something that, that you as a teacher can download on your laptop or on your iPad, either one, and it'll function the same. Yesterday I did a demo of showing how I use my iPad to manage today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to manage my iPad, and I'll show you what that looks like from my computer. So this was the demo that we did yesterday in our workshop after school. Um, this is what you'll need to do on your um, the, the student devices or students are going to need to make sure you're on the same Wi-Fi network and it also has to be um, a network that allows for you know what are technically called LAN connections but the, the devices have to see each other and be able to communicate for instance if if a student or anybody's connected to our guest network our guest network is a more restricted network it doesn't allow for these kind of connections and the device just won't work so for us we are checking to make sure that the student devices as well as your teacher device or computer is connected to uh, what we call our CS faculty to Wi-Fi um, underneath the Bluetooth icon and I'll move my little camera here so you can see um, when I have the classroom app open and I've tapped invite 
then you're going to see this little message that says invite. And then this code that pops up here, there, you're going to, teachers, you could do this, we can do this in advance with the student devices if we want to. And for younger students, that certainly may be preferable. For my fifth, well, actually my sixth graders who have iPads, um, I'm having them connect. And then each time when I observe, you know, it pops up a message. This is, this is what it will show them uh, when, it, when you uh, click to observe the first time. Now, if you tap always allow, it's not going to prompt this anymore. It's just going to, it's just going to allow it. And that may be the setting you want to choose for younger students. It just depends upon your situation. Most of my students, as the teachers did yesterday, just clicked allow. And then, you know, each time Dr. Fryer wants to view your screen, it pops up. It's a very excellent and helpful reminder of, of how, what we do on our screens. Um, especially school loan devices and screens at school, you know, we're accountable for and responsible for and folks can observe what we're doing. So uh, I recommend you go ahead and download the Apple Classroom app. I have done that. It is in the self-service app, both on for our laptops and for iPads at school. You can also just use your own Apple ID as a teacher and download it from the App Store. But you will need it to do the management things that I'm going to be talking about. Um, this is a link and you can use the QR code here for a PDF that, that Apple has published called Getting Start Started with Classroom. And so this walks through the basics of what Classroom is, how to create your class, and I'm going to actually do this, how you invite your students and they join, um, you know, the, the process and what it looks like on a student device. Uh, and then, you know, here's what you can see using screen view to view their screens. I like how you can share their work. So if you're computer or iPad is connected to your projector, then just open Apple Classroom and then you can have students sharing their screen, which is fantastic. When you end class, you can see a report of exactly what apps students used and when they were online, how long they used them. You can see this sort of thing live as well in terms of the apps that students are, are in. So this is really just an awareness level professional development. And um, if you're at Cassidy, uh, I would love to follow up with you if you are interested in, in getting some help with this. So here's what I'm going to do now. I have my iPad open um, to... <laughs> better close my password manager there in the background. Um, I have my iPad open here. And what I want to do is... Um, well, I, I guess I'll show you. When I'm using this as my teacher computer, uh, for instance, my first class today uh, is going to be... Uh, computer 6.2. I will tap that. That will start class. And then right now these kids are in different uh, classes and they haven't given me permission, which for me is fine to always observe their screen. But if I was to tap on one of them, um, and, and I'm not going to do this right now, if I tap view screen, they actually get a pop up and you know have to give permission for that. And then at the end of class, then I, I'm able to see the apps that students are using and you know what what it is that they're up to now what I actually want to do is show you what this looks like from the teacher side so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get out of my uh, I'm not gonna stop sharing my screen this is the App Store for Mac OS I'm on my Apple laptop right now I search for the words Apple classroom and if it's not already on your computer you can click download get I think you'll have to have a working Apple ID if you're here at Cassidy uh, you can alternatively go to our um, self-service. And so when you open up the applications folder of your computer, um, there is, here's the app. And you can't really see that very well, so let me change my view here and make my icons bigger. Okay, so I can press the letter C. That's really big. And go to my apps that start with the letter C. And I'm looking for classroom. Da -da, there it is. Okay. So we'll just go ahead and open up that app. Okay. First time that you open it up. Again, this is on my laptop. You can do this on the iPad as well. It'll say get started. You're going to have to give your display name. Um, this is what will pop up when, when, when you ask to monitor. So I like to, you know, put Dr. Fryer. Um, you can add a, a picture or you can take one. Da -da, and I say done. Okay, so that's going to be a picture that's going to come up. 
And then I don't have a class created, so I've got to cl click Create Class. So, uh, you know, if this was my computer class today, I could call it Computer 62 Spring and uh, go ahead and create it. And so now it's going to be a little icon here to open the class and, and invite students to join. You just double click it and boom, here I am. Now there's no students in here, so it says invite. And you can, you know, continue to invite students after you um, have finished this process. Let's take a look at what this will look like on a student iPad. So I'm going to use my iPad here as a student. And what I need to do is open up settings and I'm going to verify my Wi-Fi. So yeah, I'm connected to the same Wi-Fi as, as the teacher, as the teacher computer is, um, which is CS Faculty 2. But check it out. I've got this link right now, or this button. It just appeared called Classroom. And that appears because I have clicked Invite Student on the app. And it is just going to be available for a short amount of time. Now, I'm going to need to use this code. Here's the code, 9697. So on my iPad, acting as a student here, or a teacher setting this up in advance, I'm tapping Add Computer 62, and look at that. It's asking me for a code. It's saying it's Dr. Fryer, and then it, it also is just grabbing information from my iPad. It may ask your students to enter their names, and I think it might do that if they're not logged in to an Apple ID. So if you're letting them do that, make sure you tell them to use their correct name, not to make up a name or an alias or something like that. 9697 is my code. So I'm going to be typing that on my iPad. And when I click Add on my iPad, okay, it says Waiting for Teacher. So over here in the Classroom app, oh, look at this, Wes has accepted this invitation and put the code in so I can click add and now Wes is in the class. So you can see that this shows that I'm in the settings app. Um, I'm going to go over to on my iPad right now and I'm going to fire up Minecraft education. Okay, this, this believe it or not happens in class. Look at this. I can see without, you know, be observing the screen or whatever with this little icon, I can see that Wes is in Minecraft Education, and you'll be able to see if students are in, in different apps. Again, I don't think there's any silver bullet to classroom management, but this is a really powerful tool. And so, yeah, here you can see on my computer, um, and here I'm on Minecraft. Now, as a teacher, when I want to, to do something with students, and you can do this to all the students at once, um, there's different. There's a lot of different commands, but I double click and look at it. It says requesting permission. So here's what my iPad looks like. Dr. Fryer wants to view your screen. Always allow, or just allow, or deny. And I explain to my students they have to allow, okay? Because this is something we do at school. Is 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 we are you know accountable. The school can observe you know what we've not only are doing on our computer, but email things like that if need be. No one at our school sits around and just looks through email or, you know, looks through screens. As a teacher, teaching a lesson in the classroom is very powerful. So I click Allow, and then here's what's happening. In the Classroom app, look at that. I am seeing my own iPad, and if over here on my iPad, I start to do some, some different things here. No, I don't want to sign out. I guess I'll just click Play. Um, I actually just want to exit this app. Um, I can see anything that... Um, I, I can see anything that, that is coming up. So any of the apps that I'm opening up, um, you know, whatever, whatever I open up and see, um, I'm, I'm observing that. Now, if I'm done observing this in Apple Classroom, uh, I can just go back to show all, and then I'll be able to see all the students that are, are in my class. But you're able to see the current apps that students are using, and then... When you click End Class here in the corner, so when I am done with my class, and again, this works the same on the iPad as it does on my laptop. I'm using the Apple Classroom right now on my laptop, and I'm able to observe uh, and manage uh, student screens. Um, I would just click End Class. But let me also point out to you that in addition to observing student screens, um, I am able to... Um, to do some other things. So I can I, I can two finger tap or right click, open an app, I can navigate to um, a certain app that I want them to open. This is where I think if you're doing iPads, it's kind of easier to use iPads. It'll it'll have all of your it should have all of your own same apps. 
Uh, you could choose to AirPlay that device from Apple Classroom. So if you don't want to have your device connected and use this technique, you could actually you know, send students to your Apple TV, you know, AirPlay. You can lock all students in a particular app. Uh, you can mute their app. I don't actually know what mute means. Uh, you can also hide them. Let's click on help and let's tap mute. And look at this. I can find out right there what it is. Mute student devices with classroom. And it's going to pop up here in the, in the classroom user guide. And it says mute devices. Uh, this sets the volume. Oh, it's just audio. Okay, cool. So <laughs> that's nice. So if I've got an issue with lots of, you know, one or more students playing audio, um, I can I can select all of the computers here, uh, devices, and I can go up to actions and I could choose to mute them. Um, okay, so that's great. That is what I wanted to show you today about Apple Classroom. I hope that is helpful to you. I'm going to post this video and these slides on our Genius Bar website. You can find that. This is open to anybody to be able to take a look at um, on the website support.cassidy.org. And we have a link here at the top to Genius Bar. And this is where we post all of our workshop uh, resources. And I actually, actually I didn't, I didn't a workshop on Google Calendar right before our spring break. And I still need to post that. So I'll get that posted today. But I hope that's helpful to you. Uh, oops. That's what we're doing today in class. Uh, let me know if you're here at Cassidy, if I can help you use Apple Classroom with your students. I'd love to help you. Have a great day.